and the the stuff that we're seeing as believers in the Holy Spirit is revealing us through the scriptures really kind of shows doesn't show that they don't they don't get it they don't understand it so it becomes a fear issue for them but we really have two two big messages one is for those who aren't saved it is the gospel and we aren't preaching the gospel in churches today we're not even preaching a tenth of the gospel in churches today and well it's the next flavor of the month it's what flavor of ice cream is is the special is it grace is it is it prosperity i mean what's the flavor this week when it should be what christ did on the cross to prevent us from being in the hands of a living god um, but but the whole well, the, the, the whole gr- rapture the, the the talk about the rapture is supposed to be encouragement to us. It is. Yeah, I would say I'm. I we talk about this mm-hmm. and I get excited. I yeah. be and I don't know if I should because I know that there's going to be significant death and destruction. But as a child of God, chosen by I'm God, I'm gonna go here. I, yeah, I, it's I think more if, exciting. If someone would Christ. preach the grace message fully mm-hmm. instead of the sugared down part of. And this is a true part. Whatever you do, Jesus will still forgive you and love you. So that's absolutely true. But grace is more encompassing than just that. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, when you actually read and understand, you know, revelation is supposed to be a blessing for those who read and understand. We're not supposed to be scared of. We're, we're supposed to be like, oh, okay, great. You know, we're going to be out of here. But then you, you read on through the rapture, the tribulation, the millennial reign. Grace is still there. God still gives you an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Well, even Because he loves you that much. Grace is all through it. Even next week's topic on tribulation, that is a sign of God's ultimate grace because it's it's giving those who haven't chosen one more opportunity before Uh, eternal damnation. And uh, it's going to be a tough opportunity, a tough opportunity. (laughs) But at the same time, like he is the book of Revelation has spelled it out almost to a T on what's going to happen. So not let me just throw, throw out some biblical stats to you. And this is this gets me fired up. So I was up so late last night. It's like when you find something you're, you're studying, you feel that fire in your soul start burning. You're like, okay, here we go. Thirty percent of the Bible is prophecy, and most of that time of that prophecy, we're living in in this in this generation. The return of Jesus is mentioned three hundred and twenty nine times in the Bible. There are two hundred and sixteen chapters in the New Testament. Of these chapters, the return is mentioned three hundred and eighteen times which gives us a stat of one out of 30 verses is going to talk about the return of Jesus Christ. Um, In the uh, Old Testament, 17 of 39 books mention the return of Christ. And in the New Testament, 23 of 27 books refer to the return of Christ. It even goes so far back as to the time in Genesis. Although it's not mentioned in Genesis, the book of Jude refers to Enoch, and I'll read that one to you. It was about these that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied, Look, the Lord comes with tens of thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all of the ungodly concerning all the ungodly acts that they have done in an ungodly way and concerning all the harsh thing ungodly sinners have said against him. So even as far back removed, we're getting close to back to the beginning of of Adam, it's prophesying. So the whole plan since the fall, since the fall, was for Christ to return, redeem and save His people, and bring judgment. Do you think we need to talk about the difference between the second coming of Christ and the and the rapture? Mm-hmm. Because the, yeah, there's two different things, two, two completely different events. And I think all of us at this table um, all agree that it's it's, it's going to be a pre trip rapture as opposed to mid trip or post trip. Um, but the Old Testament doesn't talk about um, any, any any of the rapture or the, or the catching away that that is something that's revealed to Paul. It's the second return with his. It's, it's the, the second the return, saints. right? And and that's where the 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 Jews got it. The, the, the they they got confused when they were reading the prophecies on Jesus's first coming. They were they were reading the prophecies about his second coming, and expecting that king, mm-hmm. right? And and that's not what the that's not the king that it came. It was. It was the the sacrificial lamb, and um, where the the rapture, the rapture. I mean, Jesus is not he's not really coming back to earth. I mean, he's he's going to be in the heavenlies. The angel's going to call us, and we're going to be during the rapture. Yeah. During the rapture, 
Yeah, it's, yeah. A lot of people have that confused. They think that's one and the same. We we tend to, and the church has gotten this wrong for a millennia, in that we preach it the the that they're two of the same things when they're they're two completely separate events. Yep. And, and that's important to know because the rapture is okay. Now we're going to go through seven years of the worst seven years on earth up to that point. What's what part of scripture? talks about and i agree with you it's just been a while since i've actually studied it but what part of scripture talks about the differentiation between that there's going to be the rapture and then there's going to be the seven years of tribulation i don't i don't have it memorized but paul talks about it in thessalonians the second second thessalonians yes second thessalonians yeah, second thessalonians, ca- first corinthians, the and then right after the rapture first thessalonians it talks about the uh the seven year tribulation and that gets layered over different. the revelation story right yeah and that, <clears throat> the tribulation is where the seven seals are open and such and then the yeah so right now so you're talking about timeline there there is and even with daniel's prophecy there was no date there was no date but there were times like seven seven times seven times seven whatever so that leads us up to the 69 weeks is where we're at right now mm-hmm. and then the 70th week will be the rapture time that's where it talks about in second thessalonians uh, talking about the evil one will not be held back by the Holy Spirit anymore. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't depart from us necessarily, but that's when evil uh, will reign after rapture time because it'll be seven years of tribulation, trials, and, and hardship. So if you're left behind, I think Nick said, it would be a hard pill to swallow to try to be saved during that time, but the Holy Spirit will still be there to convict you because that's the only way you can be saved. So just to clarify, that 69-week timeline, that's an allegory. That's not a literal 69 weeks. But what it is it, is right. th- there's a literal years, and it was Daniel <clears throat> prophesied 490 years. And it was On four, the Jewish calendar. It was 483 years from the time the prophecy was given until Jesus was was on the earth and, and died and was resurrected. So then that's when God put a pause button on the Jewish time and we, we came into the age of the church. Mm-hmm. So we are in that last seven years. Now, once the church is pulled up out and raptured out, then God hits the play button again and we continue to count that next seven years. Interesting perspective. Cause there's going to be such deceit and I don't want to jump ahead too much into next week's episode, but there's a time to where deception comes from Satan Delusion comes from God, and that's in Second Thessalonians. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a time that you reject Christ so much that you can't accept truth anymore. So mm-hmm. there's going to be a f- slip, a flip, a, a switch that's flipped in your head that says, "You know what?" Switch, flip, shift, shift, flip. That yeah, it's like Pharaoh getting his heart hardened again. It's like, yeah. all right, now you're going to be w- delusioned. So with the with the rapture, it's talked about and we talked about it last week as, as as it is in the days of Noah and you pulled out the, the scripture reference in Matthew 24 to refer that refers to that but um, the the rapture is going to occur that in, in the same way that it, it's at the last moment of time is when God's going to pull the church out because right now we are the ones that are restraining evil evil and um, because the Holy Spirit dwells within us, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh, but yeah, so I mean, in the days of Noah, it was all the way to the last possible moment was when God told Noah to get into the ark. It's going to be that last possible moment before all of humanity's not going to when it, when it comes to the point where they're not they won't be saved. Then that's when he's going to pull the church. Where they out. relied on deception so much, they were listening to to Satan deceiving. Oh, look at it! It's not going to rain. He's building this stupid mm-hmm. boat. Blah 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 blah. Well, now delusion's kicking in mm-hmm. because you've rejected it so much that you're not allowing yourself to believe it. God's not going to allow you to accept truth anymore because you've rejected it too much, mm-hmm. which is where delusion kicks in. I believe that if anyone would have came up right before he shut that ark up and said, "You know what? I believe you." get on the boat the well i think it did i think from what i've read that the doors were open up until it started yep Mm -hmm. Yep. that the concept of deception is we were talking about ai earlier it's just a replication of information over and over and over again just watch interstellar which is really a pretty awesome movie 
uh, kind of geeked out science, but one of yeah. the things they Miller's talked, planet and the whole, I just talked about him, but seeing the event horizon. I oh dude, so freaking cool. Yeah. yeah. But Nerds. there was one part of it where they're trying to, <laughs> they, they get mad at the daughter because she's talking about the moon landings and stuff. And they're saying, no, that was all contrived. That was all made up. And in, in the you. story, it was obviously a part of history, right. but future generations believe it's a hoax for whatever reason that they've turned to justify. And that's how simple it happens. It's a little bit of misinformation that's repeated over and over and over again. Let's look at evolution. Evolution was a concept. What? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. We just had this conversation okay. yesterday. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> ev- evolution was a concept that Darwin was like, hey, this is an idea. But we beat the drum of evolution so much that it has become fact. Mm-hmm. Just because when it's a theory, when it's, it's South a theory, Park University, somebody <laughs> has talked about it enough that it has become now the accepted truth. So now, if you don't accept that, you're delusional. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, and we we talked about this yesterday, Andy, and and I, I forget. I, I don't remember if I if I read it in the study or if it was it was a, a Bible scripture. But in the end days, it's almost going to be like the evil one or the presence knows that the end is near. And they're trying to cover all their bases. And we look at, I'm going to go political, but everybody's trying to cover bases nowadays. And so here we are in near the end days, and they're talking about aliens being a real thing. And that's what they're going to try to do to explain away millions of people disappearing in a blink of an eye. They're already trying to lay the groundwork for the Antichrist to rise up and say, hey, well, I've been telling you, it's aliens. Come to me, and I'll save you. I'll do this. Take the mark of the beast. Do all this garbage, and you'll it'll be safe under my care. And it's it's all a setup because they they feel it. The enemy knows it. He feels it. The mm-hmm. devil knows that time is near. We talked Almost about that. Like, oh, hold on. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, with the 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 podcast from Jimmy Evans on the the satanist that that he knew or the former satanist that he uh-huh. knew and he said that that's that is where the deception the major deception is well you're talking about preparing your bases there's a rumbling coming that we just talked about it with um the old testament and the holocaust or the not the old testament we talked about it with the holocaust satan knows that god's gathering his children back to come back home so what's he going to do well let's start wiping them out and murdering them by the millions in preparation for that I think the enemy knows that the rapture is coming, that, that the time is drawing short. Because the enemy knows the word. Right. He knows the word. Probably better than most of us. He tempted Christ face to face on the mountain. He knew it well enough to tempt Christ. Uh, you know what I mean? That's, yeah. ball, that's and ballsy. It, and it doesn't say, <laughs> it, to go back yeah, to that just the guy for a second, who wrote it. The, he the guy who served is in the it. courts of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, yeah. And it doesn't say that Christ wasn't tempted. It says the temptation of Christ. Christ was tempted. But he used his, the, the word to overcome that temptation. Um, and just like now, and we, we talked yesterday that... That was good. Um, I'm sorry, it was just hitting me that now he is, he he is, is that living word. <laughs> yeah, um, your head's swollen up for a second. That's right. he, we see that the alien <laughs> aspect's coming because the government's saying aliens are real. We have top scientists in Australia. 